Well, hello again, Pastor Ray Barnett here with you, and I'm glad that you could be with me on the Oasis, formerly known as God's Answers for Anxiety and Depression. As always, I wish you a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, depending on what time you're watching this broadcast. Well, a little chilly today, not chilly to this uh, that this pleases me. I, I like it this way. But uh, it's about 56 degrees overcast. But hey, you know, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but my favorite season is fall. I, I just, I really love the fall. It's just a great, I don't know, it's just a great time. And, and funny is uh, many of the people that I meet uh, say the same thing. They enjoy summer and spring, of course, but fall is, I don't know, there's something just uh, special about it. Don't you think? I think so. Anyway, here on the Ponderosa today because uh, just uh, you know how many of you uh, could say, "Oh, my life is so busy." I mean, my beard is my winter beard is coming in here and it's getting out of control. Um, how many of you can say, "Boy, my life is just busy." It, it seems that way uh, to me when I talk to other people that uh, everybody's. Kind of overloaded with things. Uh, maybe that's not your case, but my case, uh, it's it's constant. It just doesn't stop. I just before I started this broadcast, I got a call from my secretary, and she informed me that uh, somebody called and said uh, they're going to be shutting the electricity off, meaning send us some money. Not we're going to be fixing something down the street. And I said what? I said. <laughs> We're current on all our bills. Who was this person? A lot of scam artists out there. I instructed her. I said, you know what? If the electricity goes off, go home. We'll, we'll fix it later on. Scam artists, con artists, false teachers, false prophets. And what else? As I've told you many times, there's... In my, and I've been a long time at this, it's every conceivable sign that I've ever read about over the years of my studies, we see on, uh, we see in our, in our world right now, the like fact that Christ is coming, well, I say soon, Christ is coming soon, certainly coming again, coming soon. Hey, you know what, uh, first of all, I didn't get a chance to um, get a video up yesterday, uh, that was because of just obligations and trying to trying to get everything together I um, like to do these on a daily broadcast for you because I know so many of you do do uh, watch them and uh, so many of you have uh, told me you know personally that they're they're a great help to you I want to remind you that I specifically speak slowly because it's, uh, I'm trying to always create an environment. Um, I'm smiling here because I can see my beard and it's bothering me. And all you ladies who watch, don't bother telling me how to, sh how to shave it off because I'm not. Um, I try to create an environment that's one of rest and respite for you. So. I didn't get the video up yesterday, so it's always important to, to make sure you hit the notification button when you subscribe. That alerts you that I've put up a video and it's there waiting for you. Now today, I want to, I want to start off by saying, the people, maybe in general, maybe not, but people who struggle with symptoms of anxiety and symptoms of depression, often have among the many things that are peculiar to this type of a situation they often have a difficult time making a, a decision part of the the reason for that is the desire I guess to not have to blame yourself for making a wrong decision or making a bad decision so nervous patients people again who have um, 
ongoing issues with anxiety, depression, more so than the general population, have a, a difficult time making decisions. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that today. How to make... I don't even want to say good decisions. I just want to say how to make a decision and to be comfortable with that decision. Now, obviously, you want to do your best to make a, a good decision. And that's really a, a, a bit of a different topic. I'm just dealing with the... and a deeper topic. I'm dealing with the general... Uh, issue of just making a decision. So I'm going to read something to you here. When Israel was ready to go into Canaan and Joshua had spoken to them about keeping the law of the Lord and also what they, they had to do. He said, the, he said this in, uh, Joshua, in Joshua chapter 24. He said, now, he said, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Now here's going to be the basis for what I'd like to share with you about just making a decision. Let's, let's put out good or bad, just making, making up your mind, making a, making a decision. The 15th verse, Joshua 24, says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So Israel, as a nation, as a people, had to, had to make a decision. And I just read this verse as, I'm going to be bothering you a lot, pulling this beard down, which I can see is sticking out. Um, they, they had to make up their minds. Who were they going to serve? The gods of the... For the foreign gods, which they had served previously, or or the nations had served, I should say, or were they going to serve the one true God, Jehovah? Now, initially, they made a good decision, and they served the Lord for some period of time, and then, as things go in human nature, it degenerated down into idol worship and back to these false gods. But the point that I want to accent is that they had to make a decision. Now, I started off by saying to you that people who struggle with anxiety and depression and so on, these other disorders, categorical disorders, often have, an, have a difficult time making the smallest of decisions. I mean, I won't go into all the details, but it's amazing when someone is, you know, has chronic anxiety and panic and depression, that they are reluctant to make the simplest of decisions, such as filling up the sugar bowl. I mean, it may, to you it may sound absurd, but trust me, it's 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 a it's a difficult thing for people who are struggling mentally. Now yours may not be so may not be so dramatic as, you know, whether or not to fill up the sugar bowl, what brand of coffee to buy, yeah, and things like this, but in general, people who struggle with these afflictions of the mind and of the body, as we've we've studied the physiology of anxiety, depression. Uh, they have a difficult time making a, making decisions. Let me broaden it now and say that there are many, many people, and I'll stick with the Christian world, that have an equally difficult time making up their mind who they're going to serve, the God of this world or Jesus Christ. 
Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a decision too. So that brings us then to the, the, the function of the will. The will, as I have told you, is very easy to understand. Uh, probably, probably one of the least complex uh, parts of our, our makeup. The will just simply says yes, or it says no. Now the real problem arises is when you vacillate between yes and uh, no. Well, yes, nah, no. And um, this, as the saying goes, adds insult to the injury of panic or anxiety and depression. It just makes it worse. Granted that there's already a difficulty in making up the mind for some of you, but the deliverance comes into in the form of starting to make simple decisions and then to uh, to endorse yourself to say, okay, you know, uh, let's say for instance, you have trouble leaving the house or you have trouble trusting people and you're not you're not happy with that and you're bound up you're in bondage so you start with making a decision that t today this very day i'm going to step out of this house i knew of a woman actually i know several one in particular hadn't left her house hadn't physically been outside of the house at all I think in her case it was 15 years. There was another I read about that was a quarter of a century. Can you imagine being inside the house, never getting into a car, never going for a walk, never going to shopping, church, any of these things, for 15 or 20 years or more? And there are cases out there. Well, I hope that it's not that bad for you. But... Making up your mind is a simple task, but again, like I said with many principles that we deal with here on the Oasis, it's not always that easy. The simple decision to, to make your mind up and say, okay, I'm, let's, let's use the li leaving the house. I'm going to step outside today. And then you want to make a small goal. For instance, just going to the mailbox. And that's assuming your mailbox is, you know, at the end of your driveway, which it is for some. And you take these small steps. But the the habit, getting in the habit of endor endorsing yourself and saying, that was a good decision. And even more so, because I'm trying to avoid good versus bad because we all make mistakes and sometimes make some bad, er have errors in judgment, make a bad decision. Just the fact that you made a decision is a major victory. Now again, trust me on this, because I see it all the time. People just have a difficult time making up their minds, making a choice. For example, if I'm counseling somebody, exhorting somebody, I'll say, well, you know, why don't we, you know, why don't you try it like this over here? Yeah, but what if, so they, they point to the opposite. I say, well, okay, well then let's let's try that way. Yeah, but what if I? You see, there is an not 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 an inability, but an unwillingness to make the mind up. Now, what's behind all that? Well, what's behind all that, for the most part, is the fear of being wrong, making a wrong decision. You, you, Listen, I, I, I meet adults. I mean, they're, they're adults. They're not young people adults. They're adults. They're, they're older. And they never... They are never able to make a good... I keep saying good. They are never able to make a decision and stick with it. One of the things I learned long ago was this. 
if I'm, uh, let's say, in uh, flux between going left, going right, do this, do that, you know, if you stay in that condition, it, it's really, it's really tormenting. Should I? Big decision. Should I change my job? Well, that would be great, you know. Well, but I better not. And then you think, you know, you go back and forth. Once you, once, what I used to do, what I still do, is if I have to think carefully about a certain decision, especially if it's important, I'll think about it and I give myself a time frame. Could be a month. Sometimes it's a week, sometimes a few days. And I give myself, I set, I set an appointed time that at this time, in some cases only a few hours, but at the appointed time, I make a decision and I stick with it. Now that's the key. Once you make a decision, then you stick with it and then endorse yourself. It could be as simple as saying, well, I made a decision based on the best information that I had. Something, uh, the conversation I had last night with a few younger people that I teach on Wednesdays before I teach the adults in the Bible study was on this vaccine uh, situation. For me, I decided just recently to get the vaccine because medically it's indicated in my particular case. So I have told people I didn't get the vaccine for any other reason than, other than in my case a cardiac patient and a couple of other little things too. It's, it's, it's indicated. And that was a decision that I made and, and you know what? What I just said to you is exactly what I did. I gave myself as much time as possible to let the companies work this out and whoever else is involved with this vaccine business till I was satisfied. So I did, I did my research and I read quite a few uh, medical reports and journals and a few other things. And uh, I said, okay, I'm good. I'm, I'm satisfied that I'm going to be good with this thing. That was my decision. Now, there is a score of other people that I know who have um, made a decision to not receive the vaccine or not get the vaccine, and they have their own reasons. So this is my advice when I talk to people. Don't let anybody marginalize you based on your decision. See, this is, again, for, for so many of you, this is a difficulty because you want the endorsement of other people. And I'm, I'm telling you, don't look for it. It's not good. Endorse yourself. You made a decision. In my case, I made a decision to get the vaccine. I am supernaturally unconcerned what anybody thinks about it for any reason at all. It's not their life, not their body. And uh, they weren't on the operating table with me when uh, they ripped open my chest to fix my heart. And they won't be with you either. Don't let people marginalize you with their opinion on your decisions in life. I'll go back to the vaccine. So people are, and I've had people say this, man, I'm just afraid what people are gonna think if I don't get vaccinated. I said, what do you care what people think? Then there's the other crew. And I got vaccinated, but you know, I'm not gonna talk about it. And you know what? I won't live like that. I won't. And you shouldn't either. All right, so we go beyond the vaccine to any, anything else you wanna you want to pick. Anything else you wanna think about. Anything else you struggle with. If you need to take it under advisement, many people will seek me out and say, Pastor, I respect your opinion. Tell me what you think. And I give them my opinion. Many times it's just an opinion. But when you make a decision, then that's the time when you need to endorse yourself and say, okay, I made a decision. Small ones, okay, that's not a big deal. If it's a larger decision, then you have to um, be able to endorse yourself that say, you know, I made this decision based on the best information that I had, and then you stick with it. You endorse yourself because if you're relying on people, you're uh, leaning on a very slender reed. People are whimsical, they're capricious. Many people want to want you to kowtow 
to their opinions, and that's not not that's not good for you. Make up your own mind what you're going to do with this, with that, with anything. Make up your own mind based on what you think is best, but most importantly, exercise your will to either say yes or to say no, and then under God and in Christ, be satisfied with that decision. Let me pray for you today. Father, I know that many of my friends who watch this broadcast struggle with making decisions, especially in the world we live in today. Bless them with peace and help them, God, when they make a decision best on the, based on the best information they have or when it's something simple, to stick with it and to not look for validation from man, but rather to look for validation that comes from God. Well, all right, that's my little bit of wisdom for you for today is how to make a decision. And for, for many of you, this is a very important topic. Just make a decision and then exercise that over and over again. Okay, uh, I don't know what the weather is going to be like for tomorrow, but hopefully uh, it'll be sunshine. I can be outdoors with you. And um, as always, I invite you who may not be subscribed to the channel to subscribe to it if you'd like to be part of this small group that we have very tight-knit group and um, just subscribe you can then hit the notification button as I said some days I don't get a video up I try every day and then you'll be notified and I always ask you for a thumbs up I think we're up to like 30 percent of you will will do that even though I told you I, I do it as a courtesy to people I don't even know just you do a good job, I guess. Give him a thumbs up. Give him a, give him a little encouragement. All right. God willing, I'll see you here again tomorrow on the Oasis in, in the hope that what I'm doing here, my small efforts, are actually helping you. God bless, and hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow.